or we collaborate with BOMA, we collaborate with uh, AIA and a bunch of different organizations um, mm -hmm. for that. Great. Can and you, do, do you have uh, like bylaws and uh, something like that that you could share with us? Sure. Well, I have the bylaws from the 2030 district, um, and I'm sure you have them as well. Um, I'll just look for them and I can send them to you. Uh, cool. It's just a really, really, I don't know, when you first started, did you get the binder? It's a huge binder. It's like 500 pages. No, we don't have that. <laughs> well, there's a binder and, it, and the bylaws are so much, but I don't know if that's going to be... Um, I'm hesitant to share it because I don't think it's going to exist anymore. I think they're redoing everything. Really? Um, we heard that, that they're so backing out from supporting emerging districts. Is that true or do you know? I don't think so. I think that they are. I don't know the details because um, I guess the board met about um, a month, no, about two weeks ago. And so um, I'm going to be updated next Tuesday about that meeting. I don't know what they discussed and what happened, um, but I still think that wasn't there a grant that they gave you guys as emerging districts? I think you were supposed to apply last November, and no. there was a grant for like twenty thousand dollars, and they were going to give it to a couple of different emerging districts. Wow! No, we never heard anything about that. And, uh, okay. Um, should I put you in connection with, are you talking to Dave Lowe? He is our executive director for the 2030 district. You mean he's uh, in, he's in Sac Sacramento? No, no, he's in Maine. But yeah, Dave Lowe. I think, I think uh, Peter Dobervoni, who's uh, who started the Seattle district and retired okay. and moved to Tucson. Uh, I yeah. think the friends with Dave and uh, they've communicated and I know I've seen in the emails I remember the emails when we became uh, you know an emerging and so forth that uh, some of that communication you know Dave Lowe was on the email list um, okay do you so, want me to write an introduction email or would you just like his information and reach out to him um, what would you like me to do? I, I'm okay either way because I think that if you talk to Dave, um, it might be more useful for you because this is the stuff he's supposed to be handling as the 2030 executive director. Um, uh, I just wasn't sure if you were in touch with him. Um, well, it's interesting. I'll have to get back with uh, you know with Peter here, you know, because Peter's been our he's been our kind of local cheerleader. Uh, okay. co-founder of the district so far here in Tucson and I know he's been okay. in communication with Dave so we need to get back with Peter and and you know find out about this binder and so forth because we've never gotten any of that stuff yeah I don't know I yeah. yeah I'm sorry go ahead well we're having an executive committee uh, committee uh, kind of planning day coming up a week from tomorrow and I've asked Peter, John, I don't know that you know this, but I asked, I've asked Peter to, oh no, I sent that out just last night, to kind of catch us up with what Seattle resources there might be. So right. hopefully he'll do that. Um, but if Okay, he, yeah. So anyways, you got your bylaws directly from them, so you didn't have to reinvent them. I didn't have to reinvent them, but I don't know if they're any good anymore because they're redoing the whole, the 2030 districts and, um, you know, they're, they're departing from architecture 2030. So I don't know what they've decided in their bylaws, whether they're going to keep them, whether they're going to change them. Maybe that's why you didn't receive them. Um, I, I just, I'm not sure. Everything is in, in a little bit of limbo. So it's hard for me to answer some of the 2030 questions because um, they haven't been decided upon by the board of directors for the 2030. Got it. At the district level, the national district. The national or, level, yeah. yeah. Uh, On the national level. So, so you know, I apologize if it comes across as, um, you know, I don't want to give you the information, but it's not. I just don't know yeah. um, where we are because everything is, uh, we were supposed to be at a certain point as of today, and we're not at that point. So I don't want to give you anything that's wrong or not correct. Um, so that's why I was thinking Dave would probably be the best person um, to connect with. Yeah, no, we keep hearing these little things. So I, I think we do need to check in with Peter. Peter's away on a trip right now. He'll be back next week. So we'll, we'll make sure we circle around to that. 
Yeah, um, I think that could Dave. That'd be that'd be a good idea. Because I, my understanding, so I guess just for clarification here, Salima, uh, the bylaws. I was under the impression that individual districts had, you know, their own potential, potentially had their own bylaws and their own individual organizational structures in terms of how they operate and committees and executive directors and all that stuff. Uh, they, they sure do. You're correct about that. But there yeah. are, they've provided bylaws like, um, you know, the nomination process for a leadership council, um, you know, things that, that, that are already kind of set forth and, and this is how you should be doing it. Um, and, you know, I, I honestly don't follow all of them because I don't know if I'm supposed to or not as of this point. Uh, we're just waiting on final paperwork. Um, and we're hoping to get everything in September at our summit. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that's going to pan out or work. Um, well, I would imagine the summit, I would imagine the summit in August would be, you know, really time for a lot of this to come together because the, the whole national group has, you know, recently formed right and then they're they're probably feeling their way as to how they want to organize with the whole district you know as they've moved away from architecture 360. Um, and so what's happening is we've got executive directors that actually sit on the national board representing us. Right. We have three um, representing us right now so they update us every month about what's going on what we need to be doing um you know what what it is we're voting on so we vote together and then they go and cast those votes on our behalf mm -hmm. um so we do have a say in the national between i think there's 15 or 16 executive directors i think detroit just launched and became um they're not emerging anymore that they're established, I think. So there's 16 now. So they've got three executive directors uh, from the different uh, cities representing us on the board. Mm -hmm. Can you um, circle back around to, you said you collaborate with Bulma and a few other um, building related organizations there in Dallas. Can you tell us how you collaborate with them? We've just begun a conversation with uh, the Bulma here in, in Tucson, and we're just kind of curious what might come of that. Well, they had a Southwest conference, let me just give you an example. And so Teresa, who's the executive director here, gave me one hour to come up with a panel and to have a full discussion about the Dallas 2030 district and what we do. So I did a whole presentation, it was a funnel. I said what the 2030 districts are, and then we talked specifically about Dallas. So this was the Southwest conference, which I think included Arizona and included um, New Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, um, and it was just in March. Um, you know, when we do events, we're doing something called Women in Green. We're having um, happy hour and a panel discussion, and BOM is participating in that. Uh, we collaborate with maybe perhaps courses that BOMA offers or the BOMA Institute offers. Um, it's just dependent on what I have for the schedule for that quarter, uh, whether I need to collaborate with BOMA. And, you know, they're not the only organization. There's AIA and there's just a different, just a bunch of them. And we all just kind of quarterly keep rotating around and working with each other. I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So can you can you speak a little bit to your events? It sounds like you have like regular monthly events, or how how does that? Well, work? we have meetings. We have our our leadership meeting the third Wednesday of every month, unless um, you know something is going on in Dallas and that needs to be changed, or um, we decide as a group to change that. So that's every month. We have about eleven meetings because we take December off. Um, we have lunch and learn. And, and who, who, um, who comes to the leadership meetings? It's the leadership council and members, general members. So we, what we do in those meetings is we talk about what's going on in that quarter and what we're doing, updating. And then, you know, um, we also talk about what's going to happen in the next quarter. So there's, it's a meeting that's an hour and a half and everyone who's a member of Dallas 2030 is allowed to come. If you're not a member, um, you know, it's restricted to just members. Um, I, I feel like this is my time with them that I don't want anybody else there. And I, I don't know how you feel about that, but that's just how I do things. Mm -hmm. 
here in Dallas. Um, and it gives me a great perspective about what's going on in the market, what, you know, building owners and professional members are looking for. Uh, you know, we connect on our portfolio manager issues that we're having. Um, and I try before the meeting to do something of interest. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with Brianne, which is Barry Giles. He came um, to Dallas and he spoke about that before the meeting for about 30 minutes. We do building tours. We do something of interest before the meeting starts. Um, so it's dependent on what the leadership decides um, mm -hmm. to do. And is that a time when uh, like building owners would uh, communicate with each other and maybe share best practices or ideas that they- Yes, we would be networking with each other. Uh -huh. um, we also have something called we get the engineers together. So what we realized was when we have building owners and we have professional members, we play the game of telephone. They say one thing, but something else, some other mess message is given at the end. So we decided to get everyone together at, at like a networking event and we're able to talk like the professional member, me, the building owner, um, and the engineer can sit down and say, hey, these are my issues. How can you help me solve it? They're wow. able to talk to other engineers. They're able to say, hey, you know what? I'm having this problem. Am I weird? Is the building weird? Are you having this problem? And if so, how are you solving it? Wow, that's so um, so yeah. we've seen that work out really well because engineers tend to be more introverted people. Sure. And, uh, you know, it was funny because when they met, two buildings were right next to each other. Like, you could walk across the street, and that was the building, and they didn't know each other. Huh. So now they know each other. It's hilarious, right? And yeah. so now they know each other, and they go for lunch, and they talk. And, you know, he's like, I can solve a lot of these problems just by picking up the phone and calling the engineer next door because I don't feel like it's an isolated problem. Or wow. I can pick up the phone comfortably and call a professional member and say, hey, this is what's going on. I mean, do you see this in other cities or other buildings? And so they feel more comfortable in their job and to be networking and to be asking these questions. Well, so it's clearly a part of your value proposition, you know, to people. That sounds great. Yeah. So how often do you yeah. get the, like the engineers together? Is that like a networking thing? Is that different from your leadership meetings? It is. So what we do is, um, so we've created on our leadership council, I've got um, engage, director of engagement of engineers. And so we've got a building owner who sits on that committee uh, or who's the director and an engineer as well so that they can come to the meetings because all the engineers, I mean, they get busy, they've got issues in the building, but that one or two engineers can come to the meeting, get updated and be able to talk to the other engineers. Um, our networking events are every quarter. We try to do it three to four times a year um, for the engineers so that they can get together and, you know, talk. Um, it's just very simple. Okay, so, so in other words, you have general meetings for your um, building owners, is that, and profession, yeah. it's so all the members, so anybody yeah, who's a part of the Dallas 2030, which whether you're a building owner, community member, or professional member, you are welcome to come to the well. meeting. But then you have special quarterly networking meetings just for your engineers, is that correct? Well, it's for the engineers, it's for mm -hmm. everyone, but engineers are also included in that. Um, like, let me give you an example. There's a new building called McKinney and Olive here in Dallas. It's a high-end building. It has high-end restaurants. Um, and it was just um, put up last August. They opened their doors. Well, we did a whole tour of it with these engineers. We looked at the mechanical stuff. We, we went into the walls. And then afterwards, we provided lunch, and they were able to network with each other. It was like a two-hour thing. Uh, where awesome. they came in at 11 and left at one o'clock, but they were able to talk to the building engineers of that particular building. They were able to talk to the professional members like Johnson Controls is one of our members, and they did all of the, the controls for that building. So mm. they led the tour along with the engineers. Awesome. So whatever questions that the engineers had, we had the professional member who handled it. Um, and the project manager who handled it with the engineers and the building owner so um, and the VP of operations to answer all those questions. 
So it sounds like you have monthly meetings for everybody, and then you do these quarterly, more technical meetings, where almost like case studies of um, like new a building of Dallas twenty thirty buildings. Correct. Okay, I see. So I, anybody can attend any of them, but you there's for more specific reasons. Um, well, yes, and they have to be Dallas twenty thirty members, right, um, to attend all of this. But our lunch and learns that we have, which are totally separate, they're educational stuff. Uh, like we have one coming up. Let me give you an example. June twenty second, we have building envelope with Crobestro and Carlisle and uh, Corrigan, the architect. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're having that session, and it's open to everyone um, to come to that event. But everything else is pretty much members only. Um, we try to do that because it makes them feel and I'm able to concentrate on the members and the goals and nothing else All when right. we do this. I see. And how often do you have your lunch and learns? Um, I try to have it every month, yeah. but uh, we, we try to have it every month, but like the summer months, you know, people are out of town. Uh -huh. And so we just skip over to maybe towards the end of August and then September, October, and then November, December, we don't have one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to go by the schedule. Yeah, yeah. So you got you got a lot of different meetings going on, which uh, draws interest and, uh, you know, provides, uh, you know, a lot of value for your folks. That's, that's really great. Yeah, yeah, we've been yeah. doing really, really well the past two years. Um, you know, we've been growing well, we've been, um, you know, working hard, all of us, um, you know, yeah. myself, my members, uh, we're really excited about the program, and um, it just, it works well here in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Do, you, do your members, uh, do you have a membership fee, or how do, how do the building owners uh, join? Well, we don't charge building owners to join, but we, re we require them to be on portfolio manager, just like the charter says. Um, so we get them on portfolio manager, but there's no charge for them to join. The professional members, so if your company is less than 10, we charge $750 every year. And then if you are a, um, if you have more than 10 people, you're a major corporation, $1,500. Okay. And this renews every year, so um, our renewal is going on right now, um, May through June. Uh-huh. So do you have a backup plan if portfolio manager goes away with our current administration? I think that that is a topic we're going to be discussing in, at the summit. Yeah. Um, I know that they're trying to get green print in through ULI, which I'm not much of a fan of. I don't know if you are, um, but that's what they're that. thinking. But it's like the charge per building is like a thousand dollars per year, and you know, it's. I have one guy or one real estate company here, and they have like twelve buildings. <laughs> you know, the yeah. city is not yeah. going to do that. I mean, you know, it's 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 something that they're discussing. But I think that this is a part of our agenda in August about what we're going to be doing and how we're going to be handling portfolio yeah. manager. Um, I don't think it'll go away. It's just going to be privatized, but I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, yeah. this administration now, I guess there's some other, there. there's some other tools out there too. There's one called zero tool and some other things that, you know, that we yeah. hear of that uh, I guess are up for, up for potential candidates, but yeah, it's a, it's an issue. It's an issue, but I think that that's a topic for, um, you know, August because at our executive director meetings that we have, it, it has come up and we're still trying to brainstorm some ideas so that we can talk about it, um, you know, at the summit and finalize what we decide. Uh, so we're in that brainstorming kind of phase. Mm -hmm. What do you do to um, actually attract new members? How, what, what kind of recruiting efforts do you, do you make? Um, for, for building owners, for building owners. Yeah. So whenever we go to these different conferences, like there was the high performance, uh, building and workplaces, um, conference a month ago, uh, there was the BOMA stuff. Um, there was uh, ULI. So whenever we go to these events, these building owners are there. Mm -hmm. Um, and like I signed up CBRE 
at the BOMA conference, she raised her hand and said, I'm in, and she added 2 million square feet to the district right then, right there. Nice. It helps that I'm a commercial broker. Yeah. Um, a lot of these people I've worked with for many, many, many years. Yeah. Um, so I was able to pick up the phone and say, you know, hey, Bill, uh, this is what we're doing. And he's like, okay, great, I'm in. Right. Um, mm. So that yeah. was another thing we did. Um, you know, we have our LinkedIn page. We have our Twitter. We have our Facebook um, a lot of my members recruit for us, like if they are, um, you know, uh, at a session or they're teaching or a professional member is working on a building, they're saying, well, why aren't you a part of the Dallas 2030 district? Mm -hmm. um, so that is our recruiting. Yeah. Um, SPEAR has a summit every year, and then they have a uh, retreat every year, and they give us about an hour and a half to do presentations in front of, um, you know, their members and uh, people that they invite. And so we're able to do that as well. So um, it's a little bit of everything that we do to get these buildings, professional members, and community members on board. Do you uh, raise much funding from sponsorships with your professional members? Yes, they sponsor a lot of our events. We try to get building owners to come for free to the events, like they shouldn't have to pay. Right. I get sponsors, um, my professional members sponsor. I have outside people who want to sponsor events. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's nothing major like, you know, fifteen or $20,000. We're talking about anywhere from two fifty to 1500 maybe two, two grand. Mm -hmm. right. Um. So, so that's how we um, that's how we handle things here. Yeah. What would you say is the the key value proposition for your building owners that you put forward that really attracts them in? Is it your networking primarily, putting them in touch with other owners and the professional? Um, I think they get so excited because they can make the agenda of where they want uh, the Dallas twenty thirty to go. I think that's what really drives them to say, hey, you know what? Um, in downtown, we're able to come together and we're able to set the direction of where Dallas is going to be going with sustainability, energy efficiency, water conservation. Um, I think that that is a big deal to them. I think they feel like they need to be the leaders in this. So I think that that is one key. And I think that the education portion um, for their engineers and for themselves because we do an array of stuff for engineers, um, you know, for the property managers with different focuses. And I really do, do think that they see the value in education and that, you know, I'm a commercial broker and I know the technical stuff, but I can't give you nitty gritty details like an engineer can. Right. But yeah. as a property manager, you don't know a lot about what's out there, what's going on. You need to be educated and say, I didn't know you could do that in this building. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, so I think that education is a really a big deal um, to these building owners and to their relevant staff. Yeah. 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 A lot of sense. Yeah. That's, that's great. Wow. Yeah. Very good. I had another question and it just left me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you have my email. You can always shoot me an email. Mm -hmm. Um, the last two weeks have just been really, really busy and hectic in between ULI and all the stuff going on that um, usually I respond within the hour, but it's just no been worries. really crazy. Oh, oh. You've been um, but if you have, yeah, this if has you been have great. any I've... questions, please, yeah. please feel free to reach out. Uh, you have my cell, you have um, yeah. my email, and then if you need an introduction to Dave Lowe, um, I can do that. Whatever you need from me, just you let me know, and if I can do it. Yeah, that's fine. I think the one thing that would be very helpful is if you could uh, send that link to the uh, to Sphere that would maybe help us research sweep mm -hmm. over here anything like that would be helpful. They're, yeah, they're out on the website or the internet. I think. Do you need a contact person for sweep? I can call Sphere and get one for you if you need. No, one. we have a I, we have a contact for uh, sweep. We've been. Uh, I know Peter Dobravoni here has uh, been an email conversation with, uh, I forget the woman's name, I want to say it's uh, Elizabeth something. Anyway, but she's, she's like the, one of the Arizona representatives to sweep. Okay, got it. And uh, oh. 
he's, you know, we're trying to get a meeting together with her to explore the possibilities of getting some funding from SWEEP, you know, for, uh, for Tucson. John, do we have a an internet? Do we have a, a link to their website though, so that we can? Yeah, just well, if you just do Google on Sweep. Uh, yeah, okay. it's, it's right. so I guess yeah, it's yeah, it's it's right there. I remember Selena. What I was what one uh, I was thinking. Um, one of the things that uh, you know we understand from other districts and so forth is the way this whole thing needs to run is that it needs to be driven by the private sector and the public sector. So yeah. uh, in your, as you were speaking about, you know, building owners get excited about, you know, they have a voice uh, and other people have a voice. Are, are those voices heard through the leadership council? Is that where the, you know, like who, who like, I mean, obviously, you as the executive director, uh, you know, have some um, strategic develop. You know, I mean, you you do the planning of the meetings and so forth. Is it the leadership council then that also participates in in having everyone's voice heard and how the process works? Is that? So this is what we do. So um, at the beginning of every year, I send out a survey to all of my members. And once the surveys come back, there are questions on that survey like, what would you like to see this year? What did you not like about last year? What are your suggestions? What do you think about this and that? And so we get those surveys back. And what we do is, as a, as a leadership council, we sit down and go through them and say, uh -huh. hey, you know what? This is the common thread that we're seeing uh -huh. or you know I think that we need to go this direction um so that's how we handle that I have a very intimate group people pick up the phone whether they're on the leadership council or not and they call me because I allow them to do that I'm very accessible and available so uh -huh. um a lot of the times they'll just call me directly but the way that it usually should happen is the the count the the general body should go through the leadership council and then it should come to me but we're just such an intimate group like i know i've known these people for years yeah and so um i have a different relationship with them so they call me directly and then i take it to the leadership council and say hey this is what's going on what do you guys think so it's kind yeah. of the opposite way that my life works but it should go through the leadership council to you yeah. as the well, right. yeah, I get that. I get that. And that's very helpful. And I appreciate that. And, you know, certainly relationship building is a, is a key to the whole thing in terms of communication. So it sounds like you've got a really good uh, uh, open channel of relationships and communication there so that uh, things, people feel like they're heard and then they see the results. And, uh, you know, it's, it sounds like it's really working for you. That's great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Sly. Yeah, very helpful. Oh, no, no problem at all. Yeah, I'm glad that I could help. And if you guys need anything, let me know. And um, I can keep you guys updated if you want me to add you to the newsletter or if you'd like uh, to be updated. I, I can do that as well. It's, it's up to you guys. Um, yeah, I'd love let to me know. What you I'd love to be put on your newsletter. That'd be great just to see another sure. newsletter. Mm. Great. Yeah, I will make sure to put you guys on that newsletter, you know, and then maybe if you have any suggestions or if you want to take some ideas from there, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, great. Okay, well, we'll look forward to seeing you if we don't talk before in August. Yes, uh, I'm excited. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. Yeah, you guys have great. a great day and a great weekend. You too. Thanks so much. Right. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Thank you. Bye.